Today is Thursday, the 20th of April, and this is from the South. Earlier this Thursday, scores of Venezuelans took to the streets again to denounce President Nicolas Maduro. This follows yesterday's pro- and anti-government protests in the South American country. Venezuela's Minister of Interior said attacks to civilians and police were planned by the opposition after three people were killed in the midst of the right-wing opposition protests in Caracas on Wednesday. Bolivian lawmakers are debating a bill that expands the legislation of abortion in certain cases, such as when a mother doesn't have the sufficient means to support a child. Currently, abortion is only allowed in Bolivia in cases of rape or incest, or if the woman's health or life is at risk. If passed, the law will extend to students and women living in extreme poverty. The policy would require women asking for an abortion to complete a document stating the reasons behind her need for it. Landslides have killed at least 17 in central Colombia's Manziales region, including three children. At least seven people are missing and the death toll is expected to rise with more rainfall expected within the next two days. According to the government, at least 57 houses have been affected. The natural disaster happened overnight and caught many villagers off guard as they were sleeping. Spanish police arrested Mexican fugitive Javier Nava, who was allegedly an accomplice to the former governor of Veracruz, Javier Duarte. Nava is suspected of being one of Duarte's partners in crime. Mexico has 45 days to formally present an extradition request for Nava's return to Mexico. Thousands of public servants on national strike marched through the streets of Buenos Aires, Argentina on Wednesday to demand better living wages. Protesters could be seen marching with banners, flares and signs throughout the capital against a musical backdrop of Brazilian drumming. Since gaining power in December 2015, President Mauricio Macri has instituted a policy of austerity and taken actions to devalue the peso, resulting in inflation and job losses. De facto Brazilian President Michel Temer's unpopular austerity reforms are on thin ice after a corruption scandal which involves over 100 politicians, including a third of Temer's cabinet. Temer has had rock-bottom public approval ratings and the scandal has deteriorated his position further. A police officer was killed and two others wounded by a gunman in Paris, France. The shooting, in which the assailant was also killed, took place on the boulevard just days ahead of France's presidential election. According to a witness, a man got out of a car at the scene and began shooting with a machine gun. Nine people were detained by police, including City Council Richie Torres, in a protest in New York City. The protest was against President Donald Trump's proposed $6.2 billion budget cut to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. China launched its first cargo spaceship this Thursday, taking another step towards its goal of establishing a permanently manned space station by 2022. According to state media, the cargo spacecraft mission will provide an important technological basis for the construction of China's space station. According to Nigerian officials, a suspected meningitis outbreak has killed over 740 people there. This is an increase of 50% in less than a week, which has mostly affected children. Health chiefs are warning that vaccines have been exhausted. Palestinians protested outside the Orfair prison in the occupied West Bank, which was organized to denounce Israel's refusal to negotiate with Palestinians on hunger strike in Israeli jails. Some 1,500 Palestinian prisoners are on the hunger strike. Some protesters clashed with Israeli police outside of the prison during the protest. A lawyer for New England Patriots player Aaron Hernandez is accusing the Massachusetts Medical Examiner's Office of reneging on a deal to turn over the athlete's brain to a Boston laboratory. The accusation comes a day after Hernandez was found dead in his prison cell. The Medical Examiner's Office turned over Hernandez's remains to his family but retained his brain.